Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Today we're discussing memory cards. Although in reality, you probably already knew this because why else would you have clicked on the video? Apart from to see him, of course. The other week I did a video that was inspired by a lot of questions that I see people ask about should you get UHS-1 or UHS-2 memory cards? Now today's video is inspired by the other common memory card question that I see people ask, which is can you use micro SD cards with an SD card adapter instead of regular SD cards? Now the short answer is yes you can, but my experience of SD cards for many years has always been that they're all right, but they're just nowhere near as quick as regular SD cards, so go with the regular SDs. So that's what I've always done. For the last few years, I have only ever used the SanDisk Extreme Pro SD cards. That's just what I've chosen to use. And then the other week, I saw SanDisk do an Extreme Pro micro SD card that they claim have the exact same performance specs as the regular SDs. Read speeds up to 170 meg, write speeds up to 90 meg, class U3, V30 speed rating. And so it got me thinking, are micro SD cards now on par with regular SD cards or not? I bought myself a 64 gig SDXE micro SD Extreme Pro to put it up against the 64 gig SDXE SD cards that I normally use to see how well they work. All the comparison tests I did were done using the Sony a7 III. The very first one I did was how many shots can you rattle off before the buffer starts to slow down? So I shot at 10 frames a second, uncompressed RAW, so putting as much information as possible onto the card, and I just held down the shutter button until the very first shot after that it started to slow down. So it just rattled 10 frames a second, and then the moment it paused and fired one more shot, I let go. With the SD card, I was able to get 38 shots off in a burst, and with the micro SD card, I got 36. So very marginal differences there. The second test that I did was then a buffer clearance test where I shot a three second burst of 10 frames a second uncompressed RAW. So I had a timer next to the camera so I could time the three seconds. After three seconds, I stopped shooting and then I measured how long it took for the camera to then clear the buffer onto the card, i.e. the faster the write speed, the quicker the buffer is gonna clear. And there was no real difference there either. After three seconds of shooting, both cards took around 17 seconds to then completely clear the buffer. There are obviously margins of human error going on here that I've got to start the timer and press the shutter button at the same time, that I'm then releasing the shutter button exactly on three seconds and then stopping the timer that the moment it's finished writing the last shot to the card. I did notice that the timer for the micro SD card was about a half a second quicker than the SD card, but then the SD card appears to have had an extra shot fired, which would kind of offset that. So basically, write speeds to the camera appear to be identical. The next test I did was shooting video. Everyone knows you shoot a camera continuously in video, things get very hot, especially the memory card, and the camera can overheat. So I wanted to see if having a dainty little memory card like this caused any problems when shooting video for long periods of time. So I had the a7 III from a completely cold start, shooting 4K 100 megabits a second video underneath this light in 30 minute chunks, because that's all the camera can handle, until it shut itself off. I was able to get just shy of 90 minutes recording before the camera shut itself down. And I didn't rerun it with the SD card this time, because I know from experience that that is roughly the same performance. I did the same experiment for the previous video, the UHS-1, UHS-2 comparison, and around 90 minutes is what you get from an SD card. So again, no differences in terms of heat performance, and the card is able to record 100 megabits a second video to it with no hesitation. So they can match each other in terms of writing to the card in camera. So the up to 90 megabytes a second is around about the same. Then I wanted to test the claimed 170 meg read speeds. Because as I've covered in previous videos before, the newer SanDisk cards with the higher than 95 megabytes a second read speeds can only be achieved using a specific SanDisk card reader that unlocks that extra performance. 
Now, even though Sandisk claimed that this will do up to 170, I was conscious that the adapter could potentially create a bottleneck. So I tested copying large video files off both of these cards onto the computer using the same card reader and found this can achieve around 166 megabytes a second average. This was slightly slower at around 156. So potentially that's the memory card itself just can't quite reach 170. Possibly the adapter is creating a bit of a bottleneck, but marginal differences. A fraction faster read speed with the SD card, but overall, the performances between them are near enough identical. Now, obviously, that's just these particular Extreme Pro memory cards. You will get different mileage from potentially different brands, so I can't guarantee that all micro SD cards will be as fast as regular SD cards. But in these tests, these particular cards are near enough the same. So does that mean you should just only ever buy micro SD cards? Up to you, personally, not for me. I don't know what the lifespan, the long-term lifespan of these cards are. I don't know if with the cards being so much smaller, if they do get warmer, if that drains the lifespan of them, I don't know. But even if the lifespan of the micro SD card is the same as a regular SD card, you've still got the adapter to consider as well, because this is just another step in the process that could potentially fail. Plus, micro SD cards are just so damn fiddly. Like my audio recorder takes a micro SD card and I'm forever losing the damn thing. Regular SD cards, so much easier to keep track of. Now, obviously you could just leave the micro SD card inside the adapter, but then there's fundamentally no difference. The only difference really between them is price. I bought both of these from Amazon. The micro SD card set me back 13 pounds, the regular SD card, 18 pounds. So a fiver difference. So yes, the micro SD cards are nearly a third cheaper than the regular SD cards. But personally, just for the peace of mind, I prefer to stick with the regular SD cards than fiddle around with micros and risk losing them or breaking them. But in case you... Or dropping them. But in case you're somebody who's been questioning, can you get away with using a micro SD card in an adapter instead of using a regular SD? The answer is yes, you can. In some cases, you won't see a difference in performance, but you might see a difference in price. So it's entirely up to you which one you go for. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. As always, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful and you haven't already done so, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.